Welcome to this next episode of YouTube. We're actually featuring a wolf ethogram term called gnaw or gnawing. And basically what this is is wolves chewing on things and they're using their back molars, which is where their power is, to be able to gnaw on items. And these happen to be beaver tails given to the wolves. This is Denali chewing. And you notice how he places the a beaver tail as far back in his jaw as he can. That's where the pressure is. Uh, the behavioral data of the ethogram, again, does have, you know, things that are just everyday occurrences like this gnawing. But what it does is it gives us an opportunity to, to again, you know, think not just behaviorally but physiologically how these wolves are designed. You'll see on the top of their head a big bony kind of ridge uh, right at the middle of their head coming between their ears. That's called the sagittal crest. And the sagittal crest is really pronounced on wolves, and that's what gives them the power. There's temporal muscles that attach to that bony ridge, and that gives them a lot of leverage. And so meaning the jaw capacity of, we estimate, about 1,200 to 1,500 pounds, but um, that, that helps them be able to break into bones. And you'll actually see next to Aiden here is a moose scapula. That's a shoulder blade for a moose that was... Uh, in the enclosure, we had some moose hunters that were successful in the local grocery store, cut up the meat, and then gave us the bones. And so uh, you'll see a lot of bones lying around. And these beaver tails were again just something as a mid-morning kind of distraction. Um, we had, uh, again, a little bit of following behavior. Nothing too intense, but we had a lot of things going on in the lab. We were boiling some wolf skulls for the local USGS project, and so the wolves were getting kind of excited because they were smelling some other wolves. And so we just gave them some beaver tails to calm down. So a beaver tail is mostly fat. Um, it's a, obviously where the beaver get their buoyancy, and we have buckets of them. And so we do use them for all wolves. And here's Grizzer really kind of getting into his uh, beaver tail. And uh, again, using the same technique, chewing on the back uh, molars to be able to get that pressure to break that up. And these are fo frozen right from the freezer. And Again, a good distraction, and once you do, uh, if you give any to the exhibit pack, you have to give them to the retirees as well. So um, other than that, um, we did have a snowfall after we filmed, and so there isn't any snow here during the filming. But on Thursday, we uh, woke up to about an inch on the ground, and they're still kind of maintaining that. Although temperatures for the weekend are predicted to be in the 50s, so most of that snow will go away. But the uh, wintertime management, um, we might be seeing an increase of feeding for Grizzer and Shadow uh, as far as um, getting uh, fruit, food a little bit more frequently. Um, those older animals, again, having um, a need that's uh, probably a little bit more related to their slowing metabolism. And we also, as, uh, as people may know, we also give glucosamine and Dirlactin supplements to all of the animals that are over seven. So Grizzer's getting it, Shadow Malik are getting it. Uh, those joint supplements, again, help keep an animal who might be normally arthritic um, and starting to get a little bit of arthritis or joint suffering, keep them healthy. And so that's been a policy of ours since the beginning that anybody who's who's old enough to have a little bit of a stiffness in their joints is going to get a joint supplement. So that's a daily basis, 365 days a year we do that. And again, you can see top of Grizzer's head here, got a really good shot of that. You can actually see those temporal, temporal muscles in action moving as he's chewing there. And that's the power uh, uh, that he's using to be able to break open and um, really snap open that, uh, that frozen beaver tail. His hair growth, again, has covered all of his um, area where he had uh, limited hair growth. Um, so the surrounding hair has grown and covered that, and so that looks pretty good. Definitely not an issue for winter. We were a little concerned on, on whether that was going to get cold, but um, he's definitely got a really good winter coat and doing real well. Been a little bit excited lately. Um, you know, as uh, fall progresses, uh, everybody gets a little bit more active, including Grizzer. So... And his activity has been, as you saw last week, uh, towards Oscar, you know, through the fence, getting real excited, rolling around a lot for him, wagging his tail, always looking for Oscar uh, when Oscar is not <clears throat> in the yard. In retirement, though, I don't know if it's just an age-related thing or the fact that they had just had a lot of deer scraps and moose scraps, but they prefer to just kind of carry him around and guard him from each other. So this is Malik um, with his tail, and he's just going to do a little bit of posturing, going to do a little scent marking not on the tail, but near the tail. And even though Shadow, again, is more dominant, as you saw from last week's footage with the following, 
dominance and food possession are two separate things. If you have something in your possession, no matter who you are, whatever rank you are, you're allowed in wolf social rules to be able to possess it. Probably evolved with carcass feeding behavior and probably evolved also with the behavior of tug of war, meaning if you pull on something, no matter who you are in the pack rank order, if you can tug on it and pull on it and get it, you have the right to possess it. So um, again, doing a little bit of gar uh, posturing around that that uh, t that beaver tail, and then here comes Shadow picking up another one. We fed actually several in the enclosure, and it's kind of really not all that interested in eating it. And so I don't think it's a tooth issue. I've seen them break into moose bones. Um, just probably they were full, and they weren't really that interested in it because we we do feed the retired wolves more often, so they they have a, a higher concentration of food cached in their enclosure than the younger wolves do. And the other thing that Shadow is still very watchful of what goes on in the enclosure so a lot of times he's not as he's more distracted to be able to eat anything because he's watching for Oscar he's watching what Grizzer's doing he's listening for what Aiden and Denali are doing so as still in his mind the dominant pack leader he's got a lot more responsibility he certainly can't take time out to eat a beaver tail so he proceeded to walk around with it for maybe half an hour and this is kind of what he's always got to keep an eye or an ear open for now and an eye he can see Oscar but Oscar playing with his duck, and uh, you know, can see Aiden and Denali excited watching him play, and he brings the duck over to Aiden and Denali, squeaking the whole time, and uh, that's uh, again good stimulus for Aiden and Denali, uh, and really what we consider to be real good social contact for them. But he, Oscar, likes to let loose once in a while, and that's just one of his excitable moments, and why the toys are so important. You can see the doghouse there; that was the old house from. Um, Mackenzie and Lakota's enclosure and uh, um, he does use that. One other thing I'd like to mention is the Chase Community Giving website voting is up again. If you recall the Wolf Center was very successful in uh, receiving votes and very grateful in receiving votes um, to receive some funds through Chase and we now are we're not participating in this round but we have two of our partner facilities are participating the Red Wolf Coalition in North Carolina who is a educational center to promote education about red wolves and are very, very good friends of ours. And we, um, we work real well with them and participating in programs as well as just sharing advice and about wolf management. Also the Wildlife Science Center in Forest Lake, Minnesota. And the Wildlife Science Center is a tremendous support for us. Um, they are the um, people who provide us roadkill when we're a little bit short on roadkill here in northern Minnesota. Being in the metro region, they have a higher concentration of deer kills. And so they coordinate and help us acquire roadkill that helps us feed our wolves all winter long. So we sure would appreciate it if you give the Red Wolf Coalition and the Wildlife Science Center the same support that you gave us um, during the Chase Community Giving Time. So we have a link on the Facebook page. If you're uh, not familiar with it, uh, check it out. And we really do appreciate it and hope that we can help out those, those facilities who are always there to help us. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next week.